Hello, my name is Felix. My name is Kehkasha. My name is Samson. Hello, my name is Julia. I'm Cedric. My name is Selena. My name is Katie. My name is Joel. My name is Hannah. My name is Shui. Hi, this is Raya. My name is Mama Ya. My name is Amanda. And I'm from Nepal, India. Trinidad and Tobago. The Philippines. Malawi. Singapore. Mexico. Sri Lanka. Scotland. Kenya. China. Germany. Somalia. England. I care about climate change because it's my future. The climate topic became important to me when I realized how my own people are affected by it. Because it endangers the lives and livelihoods of virtually everyone I know. So climate is a part of the ecosystem that keeps the planet healthy and it's changing. I care what it does to me, my loved ones and my offsprings. Climate is important to me because I believe it affects every aspect of our lives. From the air we breathe, the food we eat, the habitats all around the globe, our ecosystems, our health, and above all, our future. And that's not just humans, that's non-human species as well. Climate change is not just a climate crisis, it's a human rights crisis. Many of the basic rights which we hold fundamental are already being threatened across the globe. Humanity is constantly advancing, and I'm proud of its breakthroughs in many ways. But. Isn't all humans striving in vain if we no longer live in a functioning world? Climate change matters because it's one of the greatest crises that we are facing and will continue to deal with in the coming decades. And what makes it worse is that everyone's on the same storm. Everyone's in the same storm, but we're all on different boats. Some people from the least developing regions who yet have the smallest voice are already bearing the consequences of these tragedies. We've seen the fatal impact it's had on indigenous communities and our own societies. And those disastrous consequences will continue to worsen if we don't do something about it quickly. Every day that action is not taken is a day closer to that irreversible chain reaction which will negatively change our planet forever. It has saddened me teaching children in schools because I know they're going to be most affected by the climate crisis. Without combating climate change, we can't look into the future with any hope. Climate change and global warming are accountable for devastating changes to ecosystems worldwide. Humankind will single-handedly destroy over 1 million species by 2050, a grotesque feat. We are ravaging the very ecosystem that underpin our society. If we continue on our current trajectory, biodiversity will be impacted tremendously, ecosystems could collapse, and this affects everything on this planet. And it breaks my heart to see news titles in the media every day, such as animals losing their habitat over to wild bushfire or glacier meltings. That we all share the same global biosphere and must do the most we can to ensure a harmonious coexistence between humans and nature. And we also need to be really careful that we don't let big important ecosystems pass that tipping point and go beyond the point where we can bring them back, such as the Arctic, because if the permafrost melts, then we're in for big trouble. A directly climate-related typhoon hit my homeland Macau, causing 10 deaths around my neighborhood. Even here in a more temperate region, you can see how climate change is making weather events more extreme. Our country is highly vulnerable to impacts of extreme weather events, and one of the most common weather-related shocks affecting the country are floods, which bring about devastating impacts. I have ever seen heavy floods for several times, and have ever seen water up to this night. This summer, my hometown was attacked by a serious flood. A once in the southern years rainbow devastated central China and caused hundreds of deaths in Henan province. It is important to address climate emergency because anyone in the world, including my family, my friends, or someone I don't know in the global village may suffer from the large economic loss caused by those disasters. We have to admit that global warming is affecting the food system. We all need food, but over 800 million people go to bed hungry. And it is estimated that by 2050, the world population is to be increased by more than 35 percent. So here lies a big question that if climate change is not controlled, then how are we going to feed the growing population then? 
I foresee that climate change will lead to widespread poverty and food insecurity in my country. Because I come from a country that mainly relies on agriculture in order to generate income and in the recent years this has been affected by climate change therefore resulting into food insecurity in our country. Here in the countryside where I live, droughts make farming difficult. Here in Nigeria, a great factor like um, emissions from our industries, deforestation, bush burning, has reduced the nut nutritional values in our crops. Policy making has indirectly stimulated meat production and consumption and put countries like China in a dilemma between economic development and sustainability. Rising demand for meat will make it impossible to achieve the 1.5 target. A global shift to more plant-based, healthy diets will not only save lives, but also reduce land use pressure from food production, thereby significantly reduce emissions. Transforming food systems, especially changing diets, is the most powerful action that we can take to save the climate. The most important change that we need to make collectively is to start working together in unison towards our joint goal of a greener planet. What we need is a global understanding of climate change and its effects and how all people can take part to combat it. More international collaboration, we need a stronger resolution to make changes and we really need the rise of public consciousness. No single country can or should stay out of it. And it's about time we talk about concrete actions that penetrate straight to the root cause of climate change. I want us to ensure that our economies are aligned with social and environmental needs instead of promoting growth for the very few. Because the reality is that politicians are unlikely to care or act until something is electorally consequential. Just like healthcare, water, infrastructure and other such issues are electoral issues. We need to work to make climate action first an electoral issue and then an issue which has bipartisan support. And the most important change we need to make to address this issue? Treating it like the emergency it is. When the pandemic hit, no one thought twice about taking swift and decisive action because we were facing an existential threat. This is no different. As part of my work at Youth for Nature, I'm here to empower young people to ensure that we have seats at the table, that decisions are made for a world where communities thrive with nature across generations. I have come up with a team of seven young people here in Zambia working together to defend our trees and to replace wood charcoal with eco-friendly energy. I'm currently a member of the United Nations Association of Climate and Oceans uh, Youth Council we're an international group of young people and we organise projects which make changes happen in the fields of climatic humanitarian and ecological issues. I am the co-president for Sustainability Week Accra, a student-run organisation in Ghana, co-creating climate-friendly events to promote sustainability to students, university staff and the broad public and encourage them to adopt a climate-friendly lifestyle. I've been active with Fridays for Future in Germany since the beginning of 2019 and in recent months I have been trying to bring about more and more change in climate policy. I'm a member of the Lost and Damage Youth Coalition which advocates for finance for the slave cost of climate change by telling stories and training other youth to do the same. Currently, I'm a volunteer of Youth Enterprise Services Malawi which promotes initiatives to save youth in promoting their small businesses and also conducting disaster and risk reduction activities, especially in rural areas among other things. I'm grateful to be an acting director of a local NGO back in Macau that advocates for climate action locally. My work there includes mobilizing resources, conducting climate-related research, and also empowering local community to start their own climate action. I personally pledge to think consciously every day about the decisions I make. I pledge to develop or support any local community projects that are constantly trying to reduce the waste in the environment. To plant more trees in my community so as to address climate change in Nigeria. To make more people aware of climate change and make a difference. And I pledge to put pressure on supermarkets to take protective measures in the environments they source their products from. I pledge to increase public awareness of how 
switching to a more sustainable diet can help combat climate change. To keep the discussion around climate change and climate action active in my community. To take climate action of teaching people about the concept of environmental sustainability. So we can create the largest number of ambassadors who want to save this planet by themselves. To represent my country uh, in national and international climate change negotiations. I pledge to dedicate my life's work, research and actions to pursuing and promoting more sustainable ways of producing the material that we need to continue our lives. I vow to amplify the voices of those who should be leading us, indigenous groups who have learned how to coexist with nature, not seek mastery over it. I vow to relearn what it is to be a part of nature. I pledge my life to this task. And this is my message to global decision makers. The young people from Africa are the least contributors to global warming, yet we will face the adverse impacts of the climate crisis if actions are not taken now. There is a need to enhance capacity building efforts in emerging economies to implement mitigation and more importantly, adaptation efforts. I call on the delegates from developed countries at COP26 to live up to your commitments under the Paris Agreement and the UNFCCC. Turn your words into action. It is no longer enough to just declare a climate emergency. You need to actually work with your private sector and civil society and bridge the gap between the top-down and bottom-up approaches to create a truly holistic approach towards not just climate action, but climate justice for people and planet. Acting now does not mean compromise. It means a better future for everyone, not just for your children, but yourselves. Because the climate crisis is now. Stop focusing on your country's financial gains and start acting. I'm calling on decision makers to make space, to listen, include, and be accountable to our demands and ideas. Some of the decisions that you will have to make will not make you popular in the short term. But I need you to realize that those decisions can either save lives or destroy them. We put our trust in you to help those who will be disproportionately impacted by climate change, whose voices cannot be heard and whose lives and future are dependent on the state of our planet. Please listen to the woman, not only the men. Please listen to the poor, not only the rich. Please listen to the young, not only the old. In the next 20 to 30 years, our lives are the ones that are going to be the most severely impacted by climate change. So we need to be involved in the conversation on how to solve it and how to slow down the worsening effects. Deliberation will kill us. Political agendas will kill us. We need you to be leaders that can make bold decisions and make fast decisions. Because we've already run out of time. We need effective action from the moment this COP26 summit ends. This summit must not have platitudes as a consequence. We must act now. We're past talking. We're at a tipping point. We're at a place of no return. Make the right choice. If not for yourself, then for your children and for everyone that lives on planet Earth. So please listen. Please seize this opportunity to rebuild our planet in a positive, peaceful, eco-friendly way. I would say to the global decision makers at COP26 that our future is in your hands. Please start working together and taking this seriously. Thank you.